Hello, welcome to this YouTube channel. My name is Engineer Unsongo, and today I'm going to take you through PPR fittings in plumbing that we commonly use when supplying fresh water. This is the Bromtech Institute of Engineering, and with us, you will learn of the basics of engineering and technology be it structural engineering, electrical, and mechanical. So, welcome, and please subscribe to this channel. Uh, press the bell icon for any notifications and you can also comment if you have a valid and genuine comment. The first fitting that we're going to look at today is a 45 degrees elbow. It is used where the pipeline changes 45 degrees direction uh, whenever it is changing from uh, one direction to another and the pipes are joined with this elbow by fusion when we use a pipe welding machine. The second fitting is called a 90 degrees elbow. It serves the same function as the first elbow, but this is used wherever a pipeline makes a curve of 90 degrees at the corners. But still, because it is a PPR material, joining is made by fusion with the pipes. The third fitting is called a coupling. We sometimes call it a socket, which is used in joining two pipes to each other, which are in a straight line. Both ends of these pipes are actually welded to this fitting and it, provided a, it provides an advantage whenever we have very many cut pieces and we need to maximize on their use. The third one is called a cross. A cross is used to divert the change, the direction of the waterway by connecting water pipes in different directions. As you can see, if we could assume having two axes, then it connects water from both axes. Uh, an equal ET is our next fitting. This fitting is used to take an outlet from a pipeline. Uh, wherever, as you can see, one, di one direction has two ends and then the other direction has one end. So the direction with one end is where the outlet is always connected to as, as you continue with your plumbing line. An, an equal T serves the same function as an as the T that we have studied before. And it is used for extensions, but now whenever we are using an unequal T, we normally connect it to pipes of different diameter sizes. As you can see, the one-sided uh, diameter is normally less, so that is where we attach our pipe with a small size. This one can also be used as a reducer. Whenever we want to reduce from one pipe to another, Let's say we have a 32 millimeter pipe and we want to reduce it to a 25 millimeter pipe. We normally have reducers, we will go through a reducer, but still we can use an unequal T if there is a change in direction or uh, the change in, uh, the, there is an outlet from the main line. There is also no need to use an adapter when we're using this piece because it serves the same function. The other one is called a union. A union is designed in a way such that it unites two pipes together in a way that they can be detached without causing any deformation to the pipes. For instance, whenever we are drawing water from tanks, we normally install unions after or before the gate valves in a way that if we want to carry out repairs to the tank, we can always open the gate valves, carry out the repairs, and then later join them by closing them back together. This one is not to, uh, it is actually welded to one side, and then one side is also closed together whenever we have opened it. This is also called a reducer. We mentioned a reducer earlier. It is used for joining bigger pipe sizes to smaller pipe sizes. To reduce the uh, or lower the diameter of the pipes we are having in our supply system. Uh, whenever you want to change from let's say 32 millimeter PPR pipe to a 25 millimeter PPR pipe, we shall talk about that. Of course there are pressure differences that can come about and sometimes you can experience things called water locks. But because we are talking about the fittings, this reducer is what we use whenever we are joining those pipe sizes. And you should not use a reducer unless you are aware that the effect of water hammer in pipes 
does not cause a water lock, as we call it in the plumbing field, which will reduce the pressure of water in your system. So whenever you're installing this, uh, make sure that the water hammer effect is not that much to affect the pressure in your pipe, piping system. If you want to learn more about water hammer, please subscribe to this channel and whenever we will do new videos, you will also be notified if you click the bell icon. We will do a video on what hammer explain how you can do the calculation so that you determine whether the reducer is an efficient fitting to use for your system. We also have another fitting, it's called an end cap. It's used actually as a stopper, the dead end of the lines to stop water flow. And uh, in the field, it is normally attached at the top of columns whenever we are carrying out tests to determine whether there are any leakages in the system. And as you can see, it has no threads on the inside, so we normally weld it together by fusion welding by use of pipe welding equipment that we will discuss later on. We have another different type of a cup. This is a threaded end cup. It is used for sealing pipes. As you can see, it is threaded on one side, and on the other side, it is it has an hexagonal head. So whenever we are having a fitting that is also threaded, this one is called a male threading and it goes into a female threading. So whenever we have a system that needs to be capped with a female threading, we can use a threaded end cap. We also have another fitting here called a bend pipe or a bridge. It is used whenever pipes are crossing each other and one pipe needs to pass above the other. So we use a bridge so that we do not affect the system and we do good work. So this piece is used wherever two pipes are crossing each other and the bridge has to be above the other pipe. This is called a wall disconnector. A wall disconnector is a fitting used to connect fittings on both sides of a wall uh, which are located at the same level. For instance, if you have two, let's say, two sanitary facilities, one next to the other, you can install a wall disconnector on your walls such that uh, they will be supplied from the same line and you can attach your fittings on the same level at both sides of your wall. Uh, we also have something here called a back nut. A back nut is a female threaded nut that is normally designed to thread into a male threaded piece of PVC pipe or a pipe fitting. Uh, as you can see, we are using the word male and female, and I would like to explain that uh, whenever you see a fitting with threads on the internal diameter, it is normally called a female fitting. And whenever you see fittings with threads on the external diameter, it's normally called a male fitting. Generally, from nature, it is the male that normally gets into the female. So even in plumbing, it's the male that gets into the film. So male threads or male threaded fittings are normally screwed into female threaded fittings. So uh, that is the difference and uh, we will see later on. As you can also observe, all the fittings that we have, we have their male and female fittings also, depending on what fitting or piping system you want to attach to the other. And in the nut, ostensibly the nut is used to hold a flange in place through a tank wall, but it can also be used for other purposes, not only in plumbing, but in, in many, many uh, areas in different fields. Uh, we also have something we call a gilt valve. In plumbing, generally, we have many types of valves. We have a gate valve, a bow valve, a non-return non valve, and, and many other valves, which we shall actually discuss in another video. So you can subscribe and click the icon uh, that will notify you whenever we do a new video. A gate valve is generally used to completely shut off uh, liquids or fully uh, or partially open them uh, whenever we want to utilize the liquids from a system. So they are either used fully closed or fully open positions, but we can also adjust them uh, to obtain partial conditions whenever we may desire. 
packet valve has many parts and uh, I would like to discuss the parts if we want to learn more about valves uh, we will do a video explaining that a gate valve contains a seat and, and a disc gland and a wheel that is normally operating the valve which is the red thing that we're seeing at the top of this valve so we shall do a video explaining what all that means we also have something called a facet uh, a facet is an a, a, a fitting that holds back water when it is normally turned off and it is it is used normally to regulate water flow when it is turned on they are normally used to mix different types of liquids uh, that require to be mixed for instance as you can observe we have hot and cold if we have both hot and cold water in our system a facet is that equipment that will allow the water to mix in in predetermined proportions or proportions that we would want to use the liquid at and after combination the water comes out as a unit which we can use all together so a facet has the same purpose of a tap by letting out the liquid but now a facet is able to mix more than one liquid together so that they be used together we have another fitting here it's called a battery connection this piece is used in connections under the plaster whenever we are having a, a plaster works or concrete works we normally use battery fittings to fit our equipment as i mentioned earlier whenever threads are in the inside diameter that means that is a female fitting so this is a female fitting and whenever we have a male fitting we then fit it with these battery connections uh, because the threads are on the external diameter when the battery is correctly adjusted to its place the elbow is normally screwed to the floor or sometimes to the walls depending on where it is being attached the elbow is normally made of the chrome plated brass which is the shiny part that you are seeing and it is laminated with plastic which is the green uh, part covering the whole of it so that is used whenever we are doing connections under a plaster but sometimes we can use different fittings uh, we don't have to use a battery connection but also scenarios uh, govern we ought to be used and the availability of this equipment but it is advisable that whenever you want to attach uh, your fitting to wall as you can see there are two holes there that you can actually screw the fitting to the wall or the floor uh, after handling all those fittings they are normally very many fittings but these are the basic ones that we use in fresh water supply now i'm going to show us the difference between the male and the female threaded fittings on my screen you can see we have on the left a fitting with threads on the external diameter and to the right a fitting with threads on the internal diameter so the ones with threads on the internal diameter is normally called as a female as i had mentioned earlier and the one to the left is normally called a, a male fitting so the male fitting is normally fitted into a female fitting and if the male fitting is threaded then the female fitting must also be threaded therefore uh, as you can observe these both these are unions as we discussed a union earlier that it is normally attached in places or in systems where we want to unite two pipes and we detach them in future so instead of using the plastic union that we saw earlier one could opt to use this union and they could they actually perform the same function and as you can observe from both ends they have to be joined together by fusion using a pipe welding equipment next we are also looking at uh, the difference between the male and female fittings we have already discussed a male and female t and as you can observe these are the t's whenever we have a, a, a system where we have a female uh, thread on the system and we need to install a T then we need a male fitting to be installed to that female fitting on the system and then whenever we have a male 
fitting, we need to install a female fitting. Point to note is that it is not that these fittings which have the same function have to be attached together. For instance, it's not a must for a male T fitting to be attached to a female T fitting. A male T fitting could be attached to any female T fitting as long as it serves the purpose required. So they, it's not a must that they be used together, but it has one, if it's a male, it has to be attached to a female. And if it's a female, it has to be attached to a male. Uh, this is also the same. This is a socket. We had highlighted a socket before. You can see some writings there. They have multiplied a diameter of 20 by a half, and we shall discuss all that in, in, in our next video. So please subscribe and click the icon, the bell icon, so that you get notifications whenever we release new videos. We are also looking at an elbow. We discussed an elbow whenever we need to change the direction of our flow. Uh, this is a 90 degrees threaded elbow. And you can see the man. It is used in female fittings, not only in a female elbow.